Hi everybody, I'm Mary. I'm a physio and researcher based in Ireland and today I'm going to be talking about the role of telehealth for physio pain management as this is the main shift that physios have had to experience over the last few months if they wanted to keep in contact with people with pain. So it's the delivery of healthcare at a distance using information and communication technology there are lots of different types, but telephone and video conferencing, particularly Skype, are most popular in the research. And it's important to talk about now, as there is emerging research that people with pain that had pain before the pandemic started are suffering significant psychological and functional impacts at this time, particularly people that, had, that were planned to have surgery but had their surgeries deferred. So a big question is for physios is, can we do reliable assessments versus face-to-face -face assessments. And it seems to be the case that we can. So this review shows that if you measure pain, swelling, range of motion, functional measures online, they seem to have very good reliability and validity in comparison to face-to-face. -to -face. So this is based on a number of studies and probably needs more evidence in this area, but it's encouraging at the moment. The question about management is commonly, can we deliver the treatments that are recommended in the guidelines via telehealth? And so far, this is the case. So the trials that have been done on telehealth in comparison to face-to-face -to -face have tested the delivery of treatments like exercise, advice, coping skills, CBT. So it's similar to the stuff you deliver face-to-face. -face. And based on the number of trials to date, we don't see any difference between telehealth and face-to-face -face in terms of pain, disability, and quality of life outcomes across musculoskeletal pain conditions. There's more trials needed, but this is encouraging for the moment we're in. In terms of satisfaction, there isn't a lot of data at the moment in terms of how people like telehealth, but the studies that have been done to date that have interviewed patients about telehealth seem to show that there is a high level of acceptability and people like it. Physios, based on the data to date, seem open to it and think video is better than telephone. The downside is that both physios and patients dislike the lack of physical contact and some lack confidence with technology. So that's something to be taken into account. Then I just have some considerations before implementation. So if you are picking a platform does it meet the privacy and security regulations for storage of electronic medical information? So this will really depend on the platform you pick, what country you're in, what setting you're in, what kind of guidelines are in place. So this is definitely something worth checking. Is the method easy to use for your particular patients? So if you have patients that aren't very familiar with technology, do they live with somebody that can help them set up the technology? Or is there a way that you can pick a very, very simple method that anybody could use? Do patients see the value in this? So do patients think it's just something that they do to pass the time until they can return to face to face? Or do they actually see the, the real value in it in terms of engaging with it? So the important thing here is actually giving them the evidence that at the moment we think it delivers similar benefits to face to face. I think that's a very important thing to convey to the patients. And what treatment are you aiming to deliver? So if it's exercise, is there enough physical space in that person's home? You know, from a safety aspect, supervision aspect, this is something to be taken into account. And if it's a more talking treatment, is there adequate privacy? Are you talking about very sensitive issues? Is there people around? Will the information be confidential? So they're just some of the considerations. And here I have a slide on reading. So over the next while, I'll be completing some commentaries on physio research as it arrives. And that will be posted on the EFIC website link here. And these are just the two main articles that would be worth reading at the moment. And there are some interesting articles in the reference lists of the two. So that's it for now. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you.